Welcome to Fox 55's Green and Gold Gridiron. The Green Bay Packers are the number two seed in the NFC playoff field thanks to that fourth straight division title 30 to 20 victory over the Detroit Lions splitting with them in the regular season. As always, Brian Groff on Fox 55's Green and Gold Gridiron alongside former Packers and Badgers offensive lineman Bill Ferrario. How's it going Brian? Very excited to be here this week. Huge, huge win. Awesome display all around by the Packers. Exciting game to watch. Had the opportunity to be out there. It was a blast being out there in Lambeau Field and uh, watching that game. Got to say, I'm a little bit disappointed that you shaved since last week. I was going to tug on the beard for a little good luck. I don't know how lucky my beard would be. <laughs> Aaron Rodgers left with that calf injury, but when he came back, you can talk about the excitement inside Lambeau Field, but he comes back and goes 11 of 13 for 129 yards after the return leading them to that win. It, it was pretty amazing. I said watching the replay of him being carried off the field was – scary seeing how how weak he seemed going off the field and when he came back on the field that crowd erupted and it was just a, a ton of excitement and watching him orchestrate that offense again very exciting to watch and as we look at the Packers and what they've done now in a regular season finale eight and one under Mike McCarthy in week 17 games five and oh in regular season finales at home this team has been in this position before. Detroit has not. How much do you think that played a factor in this game? Yeah, I think it, it does play a factor. Experience always plays a factor. Having an experienced coach, an experienced team. Uh, you know, we joke about the line, but overall as a team, this team has played together a lot. And it helps being that last home game at Lambeau with that crowd behind you as the Green Bay Packer fans always are. There's no joking about that offensive line. There's not. They're, 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 the real, about the they're the real deal now. <laughs> you take one guy out of that mix and we, it, it, the whole tower comes crashing down. Pretty cool seeing the blocking there. Aaron Rodgers calling his own number on that quarterback sneak. It was. It's exciting. You know, he had confidence. The team had confidence in him. And, you know, it was a picture perfect ending. Our own Jana Wimmer now tells us about Aaron Rodgers playing through that injury and the Packers' outlook now as they hit the playoffs. Looking forward to seeing what they come up with coming out of that bye week, but nice for them to be able to heal up. Really, not a whole lot of injuries, but the big one is the number 12. Exactly, and, and that bye week, I think, is going to be huge, giving him that one extra week. You know, looking back at that, my funny story, I did have a calf injury in my career. Watching him go down, I had trouble walking around uh, just in the seats in Lambeau. That's how much pain it, that <laughs> memories it brought back to me. So seeing him finish that game, knowing that he has an extra week to recover, I think it's going to be great for, for the Green Bay Packers. You know, there were so many records, and we see all the numbers with Aaron Rodgers, but one of them that stands out for Jordy Nelson, 1,519 receiving yards. That set a single-season record for the Green Bay Packers. We have much more to come here on Fox 55's Green and Gold Gridiron. Keith Roarding from PackerReport.com will be here, along with the Mosinee native whose football career took him all the way to the Packers and the NFL. Stay tuned. Much more to come. Welcome back to Fox 55's Green and Gold Gridiron. We are at Scotty's in Schofield. Brian Groff, Bill Ferrario, and as always, Keith Roding from PackerReport.com, whose focus this week is on the Packers running game. That's a good topic for this week. It, it really is. I mean, and you know, you got to love what Eddie Lacy's doing. He's like a, a more media-friendly beast mode. I mean, he's dragging guys, he's bucking guys, he's spinning away from guys. So I think it was great to see them go out there right away and put strength against strength with his running, you know, the way he's been on a tear against the Lions' number one ranked pass uh, or run defense pardon me so great to see and then very dramatic with Aaron Rodgers he's leaving he's coming back and you got to feel good about this team going into the postseason definitely our special guest this week is a Mosinee native who set state high school receiving and touchdown records led the nation in catches as a junior went to North Dakota State and continued to set records graduating there as our all-time leader in catches and receiving yards signed as an undrafted free agent with the Packers in 2009 one of five NFL teams he would play for how about a warm welcome for Cole Heckendorf hey thanks for having me Cole, I have to say, we've had a lot of guests. We are already through 17 weeks of the season, but when I put the post that you were coming on Facebook, it reached 5,000 people. So I think we need to give a nice hand to Mosinee for all Absolutely. the- Absolutely. But that, that was by far and away, it reached more people than anybody else. So obviously, as someone who is from here, who went on to have a record setting career and to play for the Green Bay Packers, you're now in your second year, just finish up the season at St. John's in Minnesota. So now you're a coach. How are you seeing things and transforming going from a player into the coaching ranks now? Um, you know, it's a, it's a lot different uh, from day one. 
you don't have to run. It's kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> I think Bill would agree with that. Yeah, you don't absolutely. have to do all that extra stuff. You get to go out and you know see the kids do what they do and. Uh, you know, it's sometimes it's you wish you could be in their their shoes and make a catch or make a block, but um, it's been an awesome transition and it's uh, been really fun for me. Had a successful season this year, going 10 and two and going to the second round of the playoffs. Yep, made the second round of the playoffs, um, bringing a lot of guys back this next year. So uh, hopefully, just continue with that and moving forward. And Cole, obviously, with with where you've been in the NFL, not just the Packers, but you know, stints with you know, the Chargers and the Colts. And I mean, that means a lot when you're working with those young receivers, doesn't it, to be able to, you know, reference guys that they know or they've seen play on TV and kind of tell them, you know, this is how you do it. This is how this guy did it. This was his technique. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot easier when you go through this, the steps and they, I think they could trust you more with, hey, this is, this is how I did it. So this is what I'm teaching you guys. And, you know, you guys can get better if you do it this way. And it's just gives me credibility where some guys, it's hard to say, do this but you've never done it before. So, um, you know, it's, it's awesome being able to, you know, be in the shoes of mine and hopefully the guys become better than me, I think, so. Cole, bringing it back to Green Bay, I was a guy that played at Wisconsin for four years, but not being from the state, I was still honored to go from the University of Wisconsin to the Green Bay Packers. Being a, a guy that grew up here as a fan of the Green Bay Packers as a kid and then signing with them after college, what was that like for you? from start to finish there? You know, it was, I think, any kid's dream come true, you know, putting on the green and gold. Uh, growing up, it was kind of weird. Uh, I had blue carpet in my, my room, so I wasn't a Packer fan, which was weird. I was a Cowboys fan. I don't want to say that too loud, but <laughs> uh -oh. once, once Might I... Might be worse in a couple of weeks. Once I, once I, I figured... the likes just went down on <laughs> Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> once I figured out where I was from and, you know, what Wisconsin represents, I became a Green Bay Packer fan for nice. sure, so... It was a little transition, but I had to do it. So, Even though you liked it, did you see any challenges? I, saw, I had the honor of uh, going to Green Bay with Kevin Stemke, who was a punter from Wisconsin, grew up in Green Bay, and I saw him deal with some challenges being that, now granted, he grew up in Green Bay just outside of Lambeau Field, and he had the challenges of being almost too local. Did you see any of that affect you being from Wisconsin, being close to family, friends? Um, you know, the, the only thing I can think of off the top of my head is I remember the first preseason game, I had to order tickets for my whole family, and it was 30-some tickets. And which aren't went, easy to come by in Green Bay. Which, preseason games is not too bad, yeah. but it came off my check. So I <laughs> got like a check for like $100 that first week. I'm like, <laughs> where's all this money going? <laughs> That's to start off in the red. <laughs> when you were in camp, you really grabbed the attention of guys like Donald Driver and Al Harris. And I remember some of the comments thinking back to that training camp when they were surprised that you weren't even drafted. But you really grabbed a lot of attention that first camp. You know, the you know, memory going, going back to that day, I remember getting a note from my dad just saying, you know, you belong there and act like you belong there from day one. And that's kind of how the attitude I had going into it of, you know, I might – be from a small school, but I'm going to go in there and show them that I can do it. And, and like you said, I think I earned those respect right away from those guys. So, okay. Could you describe the playbook for us and, and how – I'd imagine it could be overwhelming for some players, but describe how you got into the offense and had to, to pick up on everything that they were teaching. You know, my, my dad's a football coach. My brother's a football coach. And, the, you know, the biggest thing in any – high school, college football, is you got to know what you're doing before you get out there. And, you know, that's the basic basics of football. And I studied and studied and studied that playbook. And the playbook was triple what we had to learn in college. So it was, you know, a big challenge. But if you want to play, you got to learn it, you know. And I tried to learn every position. So uh, when Coach Robinson said, hey, we need a guy at X or Z or Y, I could play all three positions where – a lot of guys couldn't do that. They played just one position where I tried to learn all of them, and that gave me an opportunity, a better opportunity. And Cole, you spent a lot of time on practice squads, but I think what people don't always understand is that even as a practice squad player, all the meetings, you know, still in the weight room, you know, all the practice, and, and as you said, running scouts sometimes both sides of the ball. Yeah, it's a, it's a grind. Everyone thought practice squad was like a full team. It's When I was there, it was eight guys, so there was – you know, one extra receiver, one running back, one DB, and you're you're basically on the team. You're doing everything: team meetings, lifting, 
practice, but you probably, like you said, you get more, more practice because you're doing a little extra where the other guys aren't doing that. So um, I was always really, really in good shape, so yeah. that's for sure. More practice, less money. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Aaron Rodgers was just becoming a starter for the Packers back then, and uh, with his performance on Sunday, when you look at that, do you think he clinched the MVP award this season? You know, I, I would sure think so. Um, he's had a phenomenal year, and, you know, with the, the calf injury, it was just crazy of, you know, how he, just the team and just the stadium lifts up when he got back in there and how the guys, you know, rallied around him and made things happen, so... I agree with Cole talking about, I want to touch on that MVP before the Detroit game. I think I really had, and I think a lot of people had a solid argument to talk about other quarterbacks in the league, talking about JJ Watt and his tremendous defensive performance in the league. But after that injury, coming back from the injury and closing out that win, hands down, I think he's got that locked up for sure. I mean, Aaron Rodgers is so good. He actually affected the Packers defense by going out of the game because they were up 14 to nothing. And next thing you know, they gave up scores on consecutive drives. So, you know, I, I asked Mike Daniels about that after the game. And he said, you know, with a guy like Aaron, it does. It affects the whole team. He goes out, everybody deflates, he comes back in and it lifts everybody. So, I mean, you know, a, a great game by him. And, and really you throw that Buffalo game you know, out from the mix, and, and the season he put together is just phenomenal. So absolutely an MVP performance. Where do you put that for his individual performances throughout the year? Had the fake spike drive to beat the Dolphins, had the six touchdown first half against the Bears. Where do you guys rank these throughout the season? I'd probably, I'd rank this and the Patriots amongst the top, because the Patriots was the first, or what I would consider one of the top real team, real defenses that our offense faced this year and, and that he had success with. And then this game, fighting through an injury, I mean, throwing six touchdowns, that's not easy to do, but it, it wasn't in a huge moment. It wasn't against a great team. Uh, or a I think good team. The, what's that? Or a good team. Or a good team. <laughs> <laughs> I think the injury and I think uh, the Patriots game are his top two, and I think the injury might outweigh the Patriots even, coming back from the injury. You know, the – the Dolphins game was this cool seeing, you know, that scenario happen of, you know, a huge play, fake spike, touchdown. But like, like Bill said, that this week is, you can't, you can't make it up, you know, coming off an injury and coming back and just doing something in a huge moment. Uh, it's, I think that's, that's the game. I almost, uh, I almost go with the Dolphins game, though. You know, it, it was on the road. The Dolphins have a good defense. You have Joe Philbin down there who knows all of his audibles. I mean, it was like they were, you know, hacking into his play calling in that game. You know, he had his fourth quarter comeback, and he made, you know, even before the fake spike, he made some great throws rolling to his right, throwing back across his body. So, you know, as, as great as, as Sunday was, as great as that Patriots victory, victory was, which, which really, to me, was more of a, a defense uh, you know, coming to making those big plays at the end. I, I'm going to go with the Dolphins game. All right. They're all very good. We're going to turn our attention now to our title town topics. We don't have Jana with here with us here this evening. So she loses her perfect attendance mark. So it's down to you and me uh -oh. for the rest of the season. We remember when Bill was playing basketball. That's one true. Our first title town <laughs> topic. We are going to focus on Eddie Lacy. We're going to start with Keith ran for 36 yards against the lions in week three. This time around, he hit a hundred first time Detroit is allowed that mark for an individual rusher all year. What do you think the difference was this time? You know, coming into this game, Detroit, it, it wasn't just that they had the top run defense in the league this year. It's that they were, they were on a pace to have the sixth best run defense in the history of the NFL. So, you know, you talk about the, the Jets had a 132 yards against them back at the end of September. Since that game, they'd only given up 57 yards on average a game on the ground. Green Bay had 61 yards rushing in that first drive. So, again, just coming in, putting strength against strength, letting Lacey go in there and, and just, just batter them and beat on them. And here's one for you, Bill. I, the offensive line was fantastic from that very first play. T.J. Lang manning up on Ndamukin Sue. Bulaga had a great game. You know, the Packers have Josh Sitton as a Pro Bowl guard on the left side. Bakhtiari is a backup. But, I mean, I think the guys on the right side, Lang and Bulaga, were phenomenal. I'm not going to lie to you. I was waiting all show for that. <laughs> Compliment to that old line because they did play well this week. But I'll, t I'll take it next year. I say I think Eddie Lacy's run at the top of his game, you know, all kidding aside, it does start with the old line. And if you have a poor play on the old line, it doesn't matter how good your running back is, you're not going to be able to hit those holes and be successful in our offensive lines. Opening up holes or moving that line of scrimmage and uh, giving Lacy an opportunity, then Eddie Lacy, he's – He's pounding the ball, but ultimately we're staying, what I love is we're staying healthy as a team, 
and we have the same guys on the field every single week at the same positions. And I think that's what uh, provides us with success for the Green Bay Packers. You know, the, the biggest thing I look at just those two different games is, you know, home field advantage, you know, what the Packers have and the ability to Aaron to change the play and getting them in the right play. He's, he's the MVP of the year. He's one of the best to play the game and he can get him in the right play. And that makes a huge difference on, you know, home field advantage compared on the road where sometimes you got to go with the play that's called just because you can't talk to the guys out there. But, you know, with the run game, it's, I can't wait to see what they do in the playoffs here. So, because as a receiver, the run game's working, the pass game's even work better. So, opens everything up. That does it for topic number one. We will take a break. When we come back, we'll have topics two and three on Fox 55's Green and Gold Gridiron. Welcome back to Fox 55's Green and Gold Gridiron. We are on topic two in our Title Town topics. Last week, we talked about the suspension of Dominic Rayola. Ndamukong Sue steps on Aaron Rodgers' leg, was suspended. That's been overturned, so he's going to be allowed to play in the playoffs. But my question for you, he is a free agent after the year. We'll start with Bill. Would you want him on your team? If I was a coach, I'd say yes, because I feel I'd be able to rein him in. I think Sue's biggest issue right now is nobody's been able to control him. I think he's a phenomenal defensive player that... You know, we talked last week with Bill Schrader about Donovan Rayola, two very similar players, that tough, gritty, throwback type football player. What their problems are, though, is nowadays a tough football player knows how to walk that line and stay on the correct side of the line, where these guys, they cross the line too many times over, where getting back to this play here and this, the issue with the suspension and the overturning of, turning of it is, I don't feel the step on the Rodgers' leg constituted a suspension where we've seen much worse by many other players this year and in years past that never got a suspension. If they came out and said it was because of everything that happened and then the way this play looked, but a player backing up, not look, getting shoved backwards. Twice. And then steps on somebody's foot Lifting twice. up his other leg. Uh, actually, they said the camera can't pan down to my feet to show how bad my feet look after getting stepped on throughout my NFL career. But people get stepped on in the NFL and we, there's no way for us to know whether it's an accident or not. That's my point. If we knew 100% it was a blatant act, then you could say that. But you can't, you can't suspend somebody for what you think they intended to do. What, what do you think he thought he was stepping on when he backed up? When he a got, squirrel? When he, got, when he got pushed back? When he got pushed back and when then he, stepped on a what is this thing I'm stepping on? Uh, <laughs> probably not a quarterback. Let me try it again. But if he Let me put all my weight on it. Oh, so, but my bad. What about Aaron Rodgers when he, when he went to shove him in the leg? Are we, are we allowed to throw punches? Or true. Was that a should punch? We sus should That's we true. suspend Aaron Rodgers? <laughs> to the now? back of Indominus and Sue's leg. But I'm just, should we suspend Aaron Rodgers? Then? What was, he, was he thinking to intentionally hurt him, Aaron Rodgers? Do you think he was going to Maybe he was trying hurt? to hurt his hamstring. Maybe. We, we don't know, though, because we're not in the player's head. So ultimately, we can't suspend him for wow. what we don't know. Just saying. There was, used to be a day where football was a contact sport. Eventually, it's going to be flag football. I just wish we got from here to there sooner, and we don't have to have these little I discrepancies. I think if he steps on him in flag football, he should also be suspended. <laughs> I think I don't want to see our quarterback of the Green Bay Packers <laughs> get thank hurt. Thank you. Thank you. So now that we've stepped on each other, pull the referee in the middle. Would you want Sue on your team? Yeah, <laughs> separate. Them. Bill wanted to step on my ankle to demonstrate. <laughs> we actually may do it at the end of the show. It's if not, we have we're not time. doing it. To reenact. You know, as an offense guy, he's he's a dominant defensive player. You know, as a, as a person, not a very good person, I wouldn't say. Not a good you know, he's had countless Should fines and way. a bunch of different stuff, you know, happen in the games, kicking people. Now watching the film, I, it doesn't look like he's trying to step on Aaron, but in his mind maybe he is trying, and we can't, we can't decide that. You know, he, he, knows, he knows if he did or didn't. Um, suspending for the game, that's... That's tough, I think, um, you know, especially if they don't look at his past things. So the $70,000 fine, that's not really too much for him, to be honest with you. But uh, I'd take him on my team. All right. There's yeah, the answer. I mean, and I do appreciate Cole being between you Thank two. Thank you. You're do lucky. you have more to add, Keith? 
Do you, you know, have you have uh, y- you know, again, I, I, th- I think, thank you, thanks, seconds. thanks, Seven. The more talent you have, topic. the less character matters. That doesn't mean you don't want character on your team, but I mean, he, he's such a phenomenal talent. I mean, you don't have to look any further than the Patriots for, you know, a team that takes on kind of wayward problem players and somehow gets them in the line. So I think he's so talented, you take a risk on it, but, mm-hmm. you know, man, when it blows up on you, it blows up big. Very good. Topic number three. There are several head coaching jobs opening up this week. Get them while you can. Bears, 49ers, Jets, Raiders, and Falcons. Which of these do you think would be most desirable for a coach to step into? And we're going to start with... Start with the coach. The coach, Cole. You know, I got a a teammate, an old teammate on the 49ers, and I think uh, they got the tools there that I think they, you know, can do something next year. They've had you know, really good years in the past, and this was a down year for uh, Har- Harbaugh, but I think they got pieces in place, and, you know, I think that'll be a, a good job for someone. You know, I, I, I love the Bay Area, but if I'm, if I'm looking at that division, I mean, Seattle twice, you know, the Rams are a tough, tough team. I mean, they don't quit. You know, I almost look at Atlanta. I mean, to me, Atlanta's one of the biggest underachievers this year, you know, you have, uh, you know, Matty Isaac quarterback. You got Julio Jones. You know, Roddy White's getting up there in age. But, I mean, he's still good. They've got some young, talented players on defense. And, and I mean, look who won that division, Carolina, with a 7-8-1 and one record. So, I mean, to me, that's a talented team in a division that they really should be dominating. So, you know, I'd, I'd go with Atlanta. I agree with both here. I, I say San Fran and Atlanta for the reasons that the team's already in place. When you look at these other teams that have, that have o- coaching – uh, vacancies, you're looking at the draft, you're looking at free agency where San Fran and Atlanta, you're going in there, you have a, a solid core group of players, you have your key position players, your quarterback, your running back, your top receivers, your defensive players. So the team's set, you're making a couple adjustments and they, they're looking for a good coach where the other teams, you're still putting it, you're trying to figure out how to put a team together at those other locations. So nobody chose Chicago. Anyone want to rethink? Or the Jets no. or the Raiders. <laughs> yeah, no. Okay, no. staying away from the Bears. That does it for our Title Town topics. Very good debate. We've been waiting for that all year. I've Thank been you waiting very as much. well for it. We will be back with <laughs> Bill's Breakdown and our Fox 55 Pickums after this. He drops it. <laughs> Time now Heath, for our holiday drop. treat for everybody, ball. Bill's <laughs> breakdown. And the Packers have found ways to get Randall Cobb into mismatches on the other team's defenses. And tied at 14 in the third quarter, there's one of your mismatches. Randall Cobb matched up against the Nickelback. So we're going to have Cole and Bill break it down for us. Well, I'll start off breaking it down with what I know best. And it's that offensive line up front that's been consistently protecting Aaron Rodgers, giving him time in the pocket, uh, and just giving him time to – to be able to find that open receiver. I can let Cole t- touch a little bit on the, uh, the route or the, the wide receiver play. Uh, you know, Randall's going against probably their third best corner, you know, which is a, a great matchup because Randall's could be a top receiver for any, any team. So getting one-on-one matchup in, in the slot there is, is just the beginning of it. You know, the biggest thing he does with this route is he sells it. Um, he goes up the field enough where he's looking to go deep. Uh, if he just kind of slants to the middle, that cornerback doesn't have, he thinks, well, I can move my hips and go right at him. Where if you watch the play closely, Randall will get up the field, work his outside, give him a little move, and then cut across his face. And as a D-back, you have to step that way. If the, if the receiver steps that way, you got to step that way. And then once he does, he cuts across his face, and he does the rest and scores a huge touchdown for him. Another thing here, just getting a little technical, talking about passing lanes, it's one thing you'll see the offensive line the, three, the two different gaps on that right side where, you know, think about it from Aaron Rodgers' point of view. You have a bunch of 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six guys in front of you. It's one thing to say the offensive line's blocking well when they're not getting pressure to the quarterback, but when they're actually putting their defenders where they want them, you know, forming that cup around Aaron Rodgers and just giving them those perfect su- lanes of vision at where those receivers are going to be at the right time, that's when everybody's really performing at the same speed, at the same uh, – I like it. Cole and Bill's breakdown, except Cole wouldn't drop the football in the open. 
I tell you, I, I really want to do the open again. That <laughs> frustrates me more and more every single week when I see it. Because I, I have to have another teammate or another alumni see this, and it, it really frustrates me. So I do want okay. to do it. On a nice warm day, we'll go back to Lambeau Field. We'll turn now to our Fox 55 Pickums, and uh, Keith and I are tied. We have 37 are. wins. Jana and the guests have 35. I think Bill has to buy us something. Bill right? has 33 that? wins. So in the playoffs, we're going to pick every single we playoff with game. Points, so. this. And uh, so you have a chance to, to catch up and I pass this. All right, so the first game on Wild Card Weekend, Arizona at Carolina. Jana gets Carolina. Her picks were already sealed and delivered, and I'm going Carolina as well. I'm going to go Arizona even with, uh, with their third-string quarterback. Got to go Carolina. I saw Keith saw my pick. I'm going Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> game number two on Saturday, Ravens at Steelers. Jana is going with Steelers. I'm going with Ravens. Also, Ravens. I'm going Something Steelers. about this team in the postseason. Ravens. I figure one of the road teams has to win, correct? On to Sunday, Bengals at Colts. Jana goes Colts. We should have her little picture. We should I don't put know her why face on the. I'm going to go I'm gonna go Colts as well. You just changed that? Uh, it was flipped. <laughs> I don't know why it was flipped that way. But wow. I'm going Colts. You can Col you Colts calling you out. Like, I only flip it when I see Dallas. Okay. We're going I'm, here. I'm going to go Colts. Colts. I'm going against you two. I'm going Cincinnati. Wait, I'm going to change it. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> and Lions at Cowboys. She's got a really? Cowboys here. I'm going to go Cowboys. Cowboys? Cowboys. And Adama and Susan, the I best friend? I was going to go Cowboys until arbitration happened. <laughs> I'm going Detroit Lions. <laughs> the reenactment, by the way, is happening again it's, after it's the not, show. It's not happening. Packers will host the noon divisional game. You can see that on Fox 55 the week from Sunday, and they will host either Dallas, Carolina, or Arizona. Our special thanks to Cole Heckendorf. Thanks for joining us this evening. Thanks for having me. Thanks for Love Bill, Cole. Keith, and Brian, thanks all the crew, you. thanks for watching. We'll see you again next week. Thank you for watching Fox 55's Green and Gold Gridiron.